Hey guys, how's it going? I got this phone from the official Xiaomi Philippines store in Lazada. For those who don't know, Lazada is one of the biggest Southeast Asian online retailers. I ordered it noon of August 2 and it arrived noon of August 3. Very quick turnaround time. There are gray market retailers who are selling it for around 400 pesos cheaper, around 9 US dollars as of the moment. But that difference is so negligible that the quick delivery and peace of mind of an official warranty is worth the slightly more expensive price. I got it for 13,190 pesos, which is around 258 US dollars. That's 400 pesos off the listed price of 13,590 since the store offered a 50 peso voucher discount and I got an additional 350 pesos off, that's around $6, when I used Citibank's Friday Lazada promo. Of course, as the months pass, the gray market retailers will be offering heftier discounts, but as of now, since this phone has just been released mid-July 2019, the price difference is negligible. This is the Xiaomi Mi A3. I love Android One phones because it offers the stock Google experience like the Nexus phones of yore. This is the blue 64GB model. They also have white and black and 128GB variants, but as of the time I bought this and made this video, those aren't available yet at the official Xiaomi Philippines store. I've used the A1 and A2, and now I'm trying out the A3. I'll link to my videos for those two phones in the description below. I also spent time covering the history of Google's Android One project that I won't repeat here anymore, so just check the links below. They all work great still and are upgraded to Android Pie with the latest June 2019 security update. There is no other phone at this price point that offers that. In fact, I have a high-end Samsung Galaxy Tab S3 that's stuck at Android 8.0 Oreo with the April 2019 security update. It's August 3 today. This box has this cardboard divider with a cutout for the camera bump. Thought it's funny that they have to make cutouts now since the camera protrusions and phones are so large now. It also comes with a 10 watt charger and a USB type C cable. It can do quick charge 3.0 but you'll have to provide your own 18 watt charger for that. There's another little box in the package with a SIM ejector tool, quick start guide, and a warranty booklet. It also comes with a clear case. The bottom part has a flap that covers the USB-C port. First time for me to see such a flap. There's no pre-applied screen protector sticker in this phone. You'll have to buy your own. This is the front, the back. The shimmering blue color is really nice. Here's a size comparison with the past two generations of Xiaomi's Android One phones. The gold phone on the left is the Mi A1, the very first Xiaomi Android One device, which was released as the Mi 5X in China that came with MIUI instead of Google's stock Android interface. The second phone is the Mi A2, which was the Mi 6X in China. The third phone is the blue beauty subject of this video, the Mi A3, Xiaomi's third generation Android One device. It's the CC9e in China. The E is the cheaper version of the CC9, but that one's not released outside of China. Xiaomi didn't follow the tradition of rebranding the X version of a more powerful phone this year. If it did, it would have made the Mi 9 SE the model for the A3, which I would have preferred, but oh well. Last phone on the right is the iPhone XR, and then a 6-inch ruler. Okay, powering on the Mi A3. It still has a bottom chin, but it's ever so slightly smaller than the A2's chin. The top bezel is very tiny containing only the tiny front camera notch, which is pretty neat for such a cheap device. I'm not crazy about it though, I'd rather have a bezel with a notification LED like the first two generations. I like seeing that light and immediately knowing if I have missed calls or texts without having to turn on the screen. Despite the 6 inch screen size, you get a pretty good grip on it, even with my small hands. Shrinking the bezels did help although I feel this is already the maximum size I'm comfortable with. This is already my upper limit for easy one-handed operation. Oh, this phone's setup screen is in Danish. I'll have to keep clicking next to reach the home screen so I can change the language to English. Aside from the nearly bezel-less top, another very 2019 feature of this phone is the under-screen fingerprint sensor. I'd rather have the capacitive one on the back of the phone. It seems more forgiving of sweaty finger pads. Okay, we're in. Now changing the language to English from Danish. The under-screen fingerprint sensor seems fast enough, but it isn't as fast anymore after the screen gets oilier and your thumb gets dirtier. You'll have to go through a couple of rejections, haha. <laughs> okay, here I'm logging in using the fingerprint sensor of both the A2 and the A3. The older A2 is much faster. I don't know who thought up this under-screen fingerprint crap. I believe in the if-it-ain't-broke-don't-fix-it philosophy. 
Even the first generation A1 logs in faster than this third generation A3. Another thing I miss with the capacitive fingerprint sensor, aside from the quick logins, is that it supports gestures. One swipe down pulls down your notification bar. Another swipe down pulls it down all the way to hit the settings shortcuts. It's so convenient to do that while gripping your phone. The right side of the phone contains the power and volume buttons. Long pressing the power button pulls up the shortcuts for turning it off, restarting, and taking a screenshot. The top is a microphone, the return of the headphone jack, and an IR blaster for controlling your TV or aircon if you can't be bothered to find your remote control. You just need the Mi Remote app. The SIM card tray sits on the left side of the phone. The bottom has two speaker grills and a USB Type-C port. Some low-end phones still come with micro USB in 2019, so I'm glad for the inclusion of USB-C on this one. The default clear case has a little flap for covering the charging port. It takes either two nano SIM cards or one nano SIM card and one micro SD card up to 256 gigabytes in size in its hybrid SIM tray. The first two generations only had a dual SIM tray. I was ready to end this unboxing video at this point as it's not meant to be a full review when I noticed something unusual. It was when I was trying out YouTube on it. You can pinch to zoom 16 by 9 aspect ratio videos to remove the left and right black bars and enjoy the entire screen real estate. When you do so, the edges follow the curvature of the screen's bezels. All well and good. Because that's what I started taking photos. But when you watch a video from a YouTuber who uploads native wider aspect ratio videos like 18 by 9, something strange happens. MKBHD uploads in this wider aspect ratio that auto full screens and these newfangled, well, the trend that began around late 2017, widescreen phones. So let's use his as an example. On each of the video's four corners, there's this very weird downward sloping angle. It's not some huge deal, it doesn't upset me. It was just weird enough to catch my attention. This doesn't happen in the A1 and the A2. Oh, and one step back of this A3 over the previous generations is the screen got downgraded to a 720p panel. The A1 and A2 both had full HD 1080p panels. So in YouTube, the maximum resolution option is only 720p. I mean, it's sad, and if you keep staring, especially at text, you can kind of see the downgrade. It looks kind of fuzzy. But since the panel is not that crappy, you can live with it. The iPhone XR only is a 720p panel and it outshines the A1 and A2's full HD panels. But then again, Apple splurged on a really nice screen. They did give you back the headphone jack though. The processor is a Snapdragon 665 which is more of a sideways movement than an upgrade over last gen Snapdragon 660. I'm not a spec hound though. It's okay with me that it doesn't run Snapdragon 7 series. I'm more of a storage hound than anything else. I'm waiting for the 128GB version to be hopefully available in the official Xiaomi Philippines Lazada store soon. Anyway, aside from the mediocre 720p screen, it's a decent phone. It boots up fast and you get clean Android. Don't expect greatness from the camera. Remember, this is a 13,000 peso sub $260 phone. It's on the upper end of the lowest tier of phones, but it's still considered a budget phone. If you keep your expectations in line with its price range, you won't be disappointed. It's very decent for its price. It's still got a slightly lower quality ultra-wide and telephoto camera aside from its main snapper. The main camera is much improved from the Xiaomi A2. Well, alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please thumb it up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon beside subscribe to be updated when I upload again. See you next video!